I just bought it. I, I had never read the whole thing. And, you know, it's like this thing that um, you always, people always teach to kids because it's really funny and it's a great way to get kids to write. So I had never read the whole thing. I always just read these excerpts and whatever and I thought I knew exactly what it was. And so um, they just uh, reissued like this little sweet little yeah. copy. It was this great, you know, Joe Brainerd Arnold. And so I went and bought it and I gave it to my kids. <laughs> Who are like 10 and 14. And, yeah, a ton of sense. and my 10 year old, she just like opened to like the page and was like, Mommy, read this. So, anyway, that was her introduction to porn. It was like through me. Um, yeah, really. Oh well. I thought, you know, this is good sex. Um, uh, my other little anecdote is that I spent the day with my 14 year old at the Tower of London in the armory. And um, I thought it made a lot of sense to read my, to you guys from my book on violence after looking at weapons for hours and hours. Um, let these guys go. Bye. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you Everyone should crawl. Yeah. Everyone should crawl. <laughs> Um, all right, so these are also numbered, and um, there's a hundred of them, and I'm just going to kind of flip through. Um, this is a book about violence. Um, it started out as a kind of interest in um, representations of violence in the media, and uh, my own sort of uh, subjective response, uh, but quickly became also a research project into violence in the West which is where I live in Colorado, um, and uh, specifically domestic violence, school violence, and, and sort of what, what ended up, I ended up calling intimate violence, or I guess people call it intimate violence, um, and not war or gang violence as much as what happens um, between usually people who profess to have a, a relationship with one another. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll jump through it and we'll just read for about 15 minutes. One, it won't snow again, it won't. You can take off your shirt, you can lie on the earth. I'm attracted to children, feet like little sons. My brother drew a muscle, then he drew a gun. My envy turned me wild and my wild made me run. In my notebook, there are mint leaves bent around my head. Airs hung with glitter, an early erstwhile ear when babies in their pretty rage wake crying. Days of rain, I've loved your English. So solo, so done, volty wet sky, an infant mouth on mine. Mint leaves in my hair here, something rotting in my eyes. In my notebook, no one's losing it. All the women with their paper scraps, their files, glosses, glasses, lashes, shawls. I make them custards. I make them queens. Two, salt on the land's low parts. You see it when the flames carry you into that nothing that loves you. Salt's pretty in the light now, prettier than trees. The beautiful boys and girls with their velcroed shoes and a man takes his key from his pants, scratches his initial into plexiglass, an A like a house been condemned. He's 24 and done for. You know him from the news. He's got hay in his heart and did to them what I cannot write, not in this, my three, a beginning, A. You, sweet compass, are about violence, which I can't. At the pool, the boy in camis reads an encyclopedia of weapons. Black Widow, custom AK-47, Johnson semi-auto Colt 1937 supermatch. His sister grins through water in her swimming class. B. I've been thinking about what I can't look at. School shootings can't Google it, can't write it into the little space to see what comes up. I'd rather see that prostitute's ass 
as she bends over for the suicidal actor on TV. There's a mandala, a chest set, a Viking helmet, a parasol, a dog, sugar daddy, to stuff into the space from where the voice would emerge that says, nothing in this world is going to adhere to me. Not one thing will make one bit of difference. I am a free and unencumbered hand. Four, said the mama, I'm going to sing to you now with my profile, a song about fevers and towns. And the baby took the song to bed, wove it tight to make herself a walking bridge, a bird cage, a bride. Five, hit my jaw on the car door, fell face down and drunk, sick on wine and drunk on butter, mouthing leather. I'm stealing my friends' hands away. I'm tying up their tongues. I'll heed no more threats of death today, no more lungs of rust. Kids poked their names into dry leaves with a pen. Kneading bread dough in the kitchen, I, guy, shoots himself shut the basement door. It won't freeze my child, not make her cold. She'll sleep unbothered. She'll wear my clothes, my notebook, my compass, my blood. Six. Today was exhausting. The furnace exhausted. Hours, a quiet house, a truce. Still to do. Bed. More thoughts. The thinking kind. Whether to blindfold the children, See the ocean? It's really absurd, as if anyone wants that kind of death. My favorite scholar gave me a pen. <laughs> what did I use it for? Self-effacement. Seven. Sun on the windshield, animals my car, and I come neatly close to rage. Up to it. Looks like someone made me up. I'm driving around with food for children, roads flat and regular, wider if we want. I'll listen to anything, Pakistani rap, weather, geo quiz, biology of lies, food spills when I round a bend. Eight. I pushed my face into the air beside the river. I broke that air with my face. My face was hard like an erection, and from my face an emission of sound. It shattered that bit of cold air that was hanging there above the water like an irresponsible bird not caring for its own unity. It let me break it, let me even more ruin it. My face was not proud of this, not not proud, nothing, just did it and kept walking. That broken cold air fell behind me, soundless because dead. Okay, I'll jump forward a little. Let's see. Howdy. Um, Twelve, the real. <clears throat> this starts with a little quote from Nick Tossick. The war machine resembles an animal, yet also a supernatural being. It understands atmosphere, how to suspend reality, yet how to create the black hole. And one hopes that by taking notes, one can replace real experience with real text. I saw a woman smack her child on a metro platform in Paris. So hard, he fell over. There grew a quietness. The kid, curled up on the floor, both slack and plump, reminded me of a leather purse in the hand of the third and foolish son who has given all his riches to a hungry hag. That night, I dreamed I had sex with a cat. In the morning, as I was buying my coffee, a real cat ran by my ankles. I almost fainted with desire and fear. B. 
Heat sways the hanging lamp overhead. Pages ascend toward daylight, the blue, unpublished hand of God. Vallejo. Nearby, another child voice cleansed. Oh. Uh, this one came in the form of an email. So part of the project was to ask people, sort of like um, Damien, Damien? to ask people to contribute. So um, they uh, asked people for stories of violence that they would not mind seeing in print later. And then once I wrote their stories, then I had to ask them again, because then it was for real. And then sometimes they didn't want them. Um, so this one is pretty much verbatim how it came. as an email from uh, a person who's I'm calling Steve Nelson. It's called West. The West is so mean, and Texas is the worst. Next comes Colorado. I come from a very rough place, but you never hurt a girl, or a kid, or an old person. I'm not saying it never happened, but it was shameful. When I was about 50, I had a girlfriend about 25, a situation made for disaster. When her brother bludgeoned both their parents to death while they were sleeping in their quiet suburban home in one with a bowling pin, one with a golf club, I had to bring her the news. A friend heard it on the radio. We were just splitting up, I think because she was having premonitions as to what was going to happen. Her brother had just gotten out of jail for petty robbery. He coughed a plea to avoid the death penalty. I was at the trial and now is serving two consecutive lifetimes, no parole act. She immediately hooked up with another guy called Killing the Messenger, I believe, and never spoke to me again. Private story, well, everyone that knew me then knows it, but I have a hard time. 20 out of the cradle, endlessly shameful, out of the rocking, the mocking bird's throat, bludgeoned the musical, the musical shuttle, out of the parents, the child from bed, wandered alone, bareheaded, barefoot, wider than the sleeping suburban, the showered halo, sky, sky, one with a golf club, one with the shadows, side by side and blue to blue, twining and twisting as if they were alive, brother and sister, memories of birds, your memories, sad brother of sickness and love, the one the other will absorb. As a child, repeatedly the thence arouse the words, as syllable for sound, the scene revisited, private story, a little boy, the one the other will include, but I have a hard time, and you beside. 21, notes that. Note unfolded, note torn from the lap of myself. Uh, 29, about human dignity and heavy clouds just above the horizon but spitting out Flames, about rubber bands and tape, about into the cold and Eddie's gun beautiful. You don't have to make something cry. In summer, you'll hear them sobbing into their cells, about classrooms acquire better locks, about snipers in black with devices for spying. Snipers in black are dangerous, are dangerous, about your mother's hair is tacked to the wall. 31, and here I must add the part about Wait, wait longer. The Capitol Hill rapist. We heard about it when we got here from many different people. He'd walk into houses in the middle of the day and rape whomever he found there, men and women, boys and girls. Only yesterday did someone tell us he stabbed them too. One boy we know, now eight, then five, saw a woman run naked from a house screaming and bleeding, she died on the street. His parents said, she had an alley and she fell down. 32. The useless mother's face is green, like a blade of cut grass sticks to your foot. Her voice 
cold, candid, flat, the Atlantic, ocean, a credit card, that, empty. So maybe just a couple more. Um, 42, two narrative poems, both um, took place in Boulder, Colorado, about 20 years apart. Stephen cut a grid into his shoulder. This he did not explain by telling me that his uncle once grabbed him by the hair and shoved his face into a full toilet. The same uncle was later found dead on the bottom of a motorboat floating in a pond with girly magazines and a gun. Stephen and I swinging into in a playground at night, feet swooping up toward branches gray against the black of the sky. I found the grid sexy, but of course I did. Also, the uncle raped him. This I forgot to say. Various ways of writing that. But also the uncle, the uncle, and the uncle he raped him. The uncle said he raped him. Swung on the swing, said stoned. My uncle, he, we, had, have the same birthday. He put headphones on my ears, pressed play. Madame Butterfly, Shostakovich. I had not heard such music. A boy sat in my office speaking of poems, his interest in graduate school. We were having the pleasantest conversation imaginable. My office is nothing special, but outside there are blooming trees and lilacs. Then I notice his hands, burn marks, perfectly round, fresh and red, seven or eight per hand. Perhaps he sees me notice, places his hands in his lap. We continue to talk over the burns, above the burns. Last two. 43. Resting hands. Why such silence? No silence. Anyone in an alley can look like a robber. I miss the ghost. I saw him only twice. How quick to form attachments the human mind is. Does a cave frighten me? An ocean floor? I'm alone in what seems a net made of vines. Centuries have passed and less and less to say. 44. Cold and grand, fresh and red. Currently, nine women on death row, 369 men on death row in Texas. Creator, shall I bloom? The women on death row have murdered, in most cases, children, in most cases, their own. The men have murdered, in most cases, women. Um, he's the author of four books of poetry, most recently mm -hmm. 100 Notes and Violence, um, and Sarah of Fragments and Lines. Right? Yeah. Um, she's a recipient of the Fellowship from the National Foundation of Arts, 2011 and 12. Surface Tension, Rupture of Time and the Poetics of Desire in Late Victorian Poetry, forthcoming 2012, uh, from Dorky Archives. She's also the co-publisher with Tim Roberts of Counterpath Press, and together you run a bookshop slash gallery slash slash lots of things. Performance space, yeah. Performance space, yeah, in uh, Boulder, Colorado. Denver. Denver, sorry, Denver, Colorado, right, but you teach in Boulder, Colorado. That's right. Right. <laughs> the University of Colorado in Boulder. Okay, so thank you. Thank you.